Well, all right, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Well of Darkness, book number one in Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman's Sovereign Stone Trilogy. I am a huge fan of Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. In fact, I've got my entire Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman collection right up there on that shelf. You can see them. At least I hope I aimed the camera towards them. Anyway, if not, I'll edit. I'll edit it out and do it over. So the trilogy, this new trilogy, which I have not read, I just purchased this. This new trilogy is the Sovereign Stone trilogy. We've got the, all three of them here. Book number one is the one I'm reviewing, Well of Darkness. Let's talk about the covers first, because the covers are very important to this story, believe it or not. So these covers were all done by Larry Elmore. Great, great fantasy artist. One of the legendary fantasy artists. In fact, he was the one that did the original Dragonlance books. If you followed my channel, you know I'm a good friend of Larry Elmore. Um, the artist, he signed all my books, along with Tracy Hickman has signed a lot of my Dragonlance books. I've not met Margaret Weiss, so she hasn't signed anything of mine. But Larry Elmore and Tracy Hickman have. Anyway, Larry Elmore did a lot of the covers of Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman novels. One day, well, I will let, I will just read to you what Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman say about their cover artist, Larry Elmore, because they have an acknowledgement for him in here. And I'm going to read it because it's pretty interesting and it pertains to this book a lot. So, for years, ever since we first worked on the Dragonlance project together, we have been telling our stories to fantasy artist Larry Elmore. Then one day, Larry Elmer, Elmore told us a story. He told us a story about a wondrous realm where paladins of good, wearing magical silver armor, fight vampire paladins whose cursed armor is as dark as the bottom of a well. In this world, dragons battle huge creatures known as the Bach. Elves live lives dedicated to honor and the sword. Orcans sail the seas in pirate ships. Dwarves ride shaggy ponies across vast plains. Humans build castles out of rainbows. And wizards draw magic from the air and the ground, from the fire and the water and the darkness of the void. We were entranced with this world of Larry Elmore's creation. We wanted to meet the people who lived there and share their lives and their adventures with those of you who also enjoy exploring strange and mysterious and wonderful realms of fantasy. So we are pleased to bring Larry Elmore's vision to life in this first book of the Sovereign Stone, Stone Trilogy. That's pretty fucking cool. Their cover artist said, hey, I got an idea. And he explained it to them. And they were like, that idea is fucking dope. Might not have said it the way I said it, but you get the gist. And so they went ahead and wrote a trilogy based off of their cover artist's idea. That's killer. Not only that, I just read to you most of what's in this book. And it sounded awesome to me. Awesome. So anyway, these books came out in the year 2000, 2001, and 2002. They're not that old. You know, the Dragonlance stuff came out in the mid-80s. So I consider anything that's come out after the year 2000 to be sort of modern fantasy. Now, the Dragonlance books and the Deathgate cycle and a lot of the stuff that Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman wrote previous could be considered sort of almost classic fantasy. This is more in the realm of new agey fantasy, sort of like the... It's like their version of Grimdark, almost. It's not quite as grim as Mark Lawrence or Joe Abercrombie or even my books. 
but it is much darker than anything else they've written so far. It um, starts with Gareth. He's deemed a whipping boy. Now, to be, called, to, be, to be given the title of whipping boy is very prestigious in this realm because the prince, Dagneris, he cannot be harmed. He cannot be touched. No, no drop of his blood shall be spilt. So when Dagneris screws up or says something stupid, Dagneris is not punished. They punish the whipping boy, who is Gareth. And this is a great honor. I mean, many, many people vie to have their children be whipping boys for young princes. So we're already starting off in a land that's just whack. Just weird, whack. Got some crazy rules. I liked it because we start with those two characters, the whipping boy Gareth and the prince, Dagneris who really, really wants to be friends with his whipping boy, and they do become friends, but things start to start to twist and go a little sideways. You know, Gareth has a birthmark, the whipping boy has a birthmark that people tease him about. He's not that good looking. Whereas Dagneris, the prince is good looking, good looking enough and prestige enough that he can be a bully and a brat to everybody and he gets, gets away with it. Meanwhile, Gareth has to take all the punishment, but they do train together and they do play together. They're both nine years old at the start of this book. This book, and, they, and they're trained by a, a, a group of people. Syl Wyeth the elf, um, there's some dwarves that come in and some other things and there's a lot of uh, Portal, there's magic portals that the elves build that can travel from city to city. But they're very dangerous and very controversial, these portals. And they want to build a portal to the gods. That's their goal. And, 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 and is that ethical to really do such a thing? And, and meanwhile, Dagneris is this prince who... Um, and there's these things called sovereign stones that some people think can unite the world. Or other people think this is going to destroy the world. And split the world asunder, but um, Dagneris and Gareth were at the heart of this story. And the interplay between those two young characters as they grow old together is pretty fascinating and pretty dark and pretty hard to read in some spots, but it's fun. They're good friends. And then it's, there's the push and pull of this darkness that's creeping in because Dagneris, the bottom line, Dagneris is... This is a this is kind of a grim story for Margaret Weiss and Tracy Eggman. They they're turning him slowly into the Dark Lord, the Sauron or the Darth Vader of the series. I think just having read book one, I could be way off, but having just you know about twenty five percent of the way into this book, that's kind of the way most readers are going to start thinking about this. And so it's kind of like you're reading the story of a dark lord who's becoming a dark lord from his kind of perspective and how people just enable his bad behavior after because he never gets punished for it his whipping boy gets punished for it anyway it's just it's kind of a cool story a story i was not expecting i was expecting more sort of dragon lance like quest high high quest high fantasy high magic stuff and this was more kind of like not as grim as uh, your Game of Thrones or anything like that, but cer certainly leaning towards that tone. There are no F words or raunchy sex scenes or really gory stuff, but just the overall tone of it is, this is a more harsh land, <laughs> a more kind of an evil land. Characters are more gray. There are no real heroes or villains. It's all just sort of that gray political intrigue that goes back and forth. And you can slowly see one of the characters turning to the dark side. I was pleasantly surprised with how much I loved it. I mean, the first chapter hooked me right from the get-go. And I actually bought into everything that was going on here. So I give this a good solid 8.5 out of 10. And we'll get to books two and three somewhere down the road and review them on a channel.